Nations Church. We restore and release potential in people by connecting them to God. It is time to rise again. New life is coming to dead things and situations. New opportunities are replacing lost ones. Our morning is turning to dancing as the death of winter gives birth to the life of spring. The dry bones are living again. God has remembered us so. It is time to rise. It is time to rebuild. It is time for renewal and restoration. 2021, the year of resurgence. Please stand and welcome our senior pastor, Dr. Frank Ofosu Apia. Somebody bless him this beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. You may be seated. How are you all today? Was it a response or a groan? How are you all today? Bless God. We thank God for this morning. Um, we're going to study God's word together. When we come into God's house, we, we come to give him worship. We come to offer him our lives. Then we also still and be quiet and listen to him as his word transforms us into the image of his son. Which means every time we attend the house of God, a gathering, the assembly of God's people, we go back better. Do you agree? Right. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. We read in verse 7 and verse number 8. I know it's not April 15th yet. <laughs> Romans chapter 13, verse number 7 and 8. It says, Render therefore to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. <laughs> customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Do not owe anyone anything except to love one another. For the person who loves another has fulfilled the law. The resurgence of honor. Father, teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I know today is International Day and we're going to have the main celebration in the second service. So the second service, I'll, I'll bring a different word. You can stick around and hear it. It's called Lift Up Your Eyes and Look. Yeah, it's very interesting. But um, <laughs> uh, the word that God has given to us for this year to guide us, to put us all on the same page as we grow together, uh, came out of the backdrop of the flood of Noah. And after many, many days, there was decimation, there was trouble, there was killing, there was dying, there was destruction, there was everything. Human beings, animals, vegetation, everything, except Noah and his family, his three sons and their family, eight souls in all. And the Bible says in Genesis 8 and 1 that, and the Lord remembered Noah. The Lord, in the midst of all the trouble, God had not forgotten about them. And the same applies to you. And uh, Noah began to send out, you know, some animals, some creatures to test whether the waters had receded. Verse 11 says that a, a, the, the dove came back, the raven never came back, the dove came back with a freshly plucked olive leaf in its beak telling us that the waters have receded. And from there, we got our word for this year. Because we've been in a terrible um, pandemic, you know, since last year, somewhere when it was first discovered somewhere in Seattle in February, late February, and it's been raging, different variants, you know. Today is Delta, tomorrow Lambda, next time is Omega, and <laughs> it goes on and on and on and on and on. Uh, the Greeks are suffering, but it goes on and on. It goes on and on and on and on. But um, life still goes on because he has remembered us. Yeah. Oh, that's a weak one. I said life goes on because he has remembered us. Yeah. And every, every month we have our monthly themes, and we have just come out of one. And this month of October, it's October already, yeah. the 10th month. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's October already. It's October already. 
you may not understand, but it's October already. You know, they just made the news that America has crossed over 700,000 fatalities, worse than even the 1918 flu pandemic. So we have every cause to say thank you, Jesus. We have every cause. I'm telling you, you may not understand, but <laughs> I'm telling you, if you do some of the jobs that we do and you see what we see, you will never raise your nose again. <laughs> but the theme for this month is the resurgence of honor means honor must come back again. Because uh, I, I believe that this, this subject, this is very important today, and there are some very practical things that um, I'm going to talk to you about in our lives as Christians. Because sometimes, as Christians, we tend to be terrible citizens. All in the name of we are in the spirit. But speed limit has no respect for being in the spirit. <laughs> you, you agree with me? So it's important that we, we understand some of these things. And I believe that scattered through the pages of Scripture are very powerful principles. And this thing called honor is one of them. Because the Old Testament and the New Testament, they all deal with this most important topic. I realize that sometimes people struggle unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. The emphasis is on unnecessarily. Because they have not learned kingdom principles. And one of them is this one called honor. And you understand it very soon. In fact, wherever Jesus went and he was dishonored, he could not get results. He went to his own backyard, his own hometown. I stood there the other day and uh, from the top of a hotel, I looked at Nazareth and I said, so this is the place that they, they pull this first one on the Messiah? And in his own hometown, because he was dishonored by familiarity, the Bible says that he could not, not that he would not, he could, which means even if he had attempted, the one that John says that he was given the spirit without measure. And yet there was one thing that stopped the power from flowing. In fact, Luke also tells us in Luke 5 that he was in a house and the power of God was present to heal them. That word them is so important. Which means everybody, the Jewish leaders, everybody who had traveled everywhere, them means everybody. And yet when Jesus began to descend their dishonoring thoughts, the Bible says that he could not accept some few people who honored him. And I realized that today in our generation, sadly, Honor is a dying cult in our is dying in our culture. You go to nations, you go to homes, you go to churches, marriages, the things that people married people say to each other when they are angry. Even in friendships, the way we dishonor friendships, relationships, and all because we are being fed a constant diet of disrespect, mistrust, distrust, dishonor. You go on Facebook today and today's generation, the way they can insult the elderly. It's enough to let all the eggs in your tummy just crack. It's like, where is honor today? The way we talk down on each other. There are some nations and there are some cultures you will never get any meaningful conversation, two lines, without insult coming in. It seems like if you don't insult, you don't get attention. No doubt. Anyway. We haven't even learned that sometimes some closed doors could be opened if we learn to honor. Some promotions that you have fasted and prayed and they haven't come and you are angry. Could it be that maybe you haven't honored those who could promote you? And here, if you read the whole chapter, Paul is writing to the church in Rome, the Romans. And if you know the background, that this church was in a very hostile place, hostile territory, ruled and led by wicked emperors. They even crucified their Lord. But Paul is schooling them that no matter what, you should not be a bad citizen. And he talks about submitting yourself to authority, to law enforcement, paying your taxes respecting one another. And I realize that wherever I have traveled, and I've traveled a few places, wherever there has been honor, 
it was very easy for the power of God to manifest. Very easy. And wherever there has been dishonor, it's like you want to go away and go home in a hurry. That is why it feels like sometimes preachers, pastors, evangelists, they travel to some places and they get more results. Ronald Bonke, God, God bless his soul. He's from Germany. He preaches in Germany. And sometimes the biggest crowd, he gets 50 people. He goes to Africa. He holds crusades. And there's a, there are a million people. And the healings, with my own eyes, the healings start before he starts preaching. He goes back to his own home country. And who cares? T.L. Osborne comes to America. I I'm, I'm wonder how many people have heard of T.L. Osborne, Tom Lee Osborne. I saw this man and I said, so is this the T.L. Osborne? I shook his hand on the tarmac. Met him in the tarmac at the airport. It's like, is he him? And he stands, you know, he, he has broken nations, killings, palpable ones. But he comes to America and they meet him at the airport with scandal news. Because some of them are selling newspaper. Honor. So what is honor? What is honor? You're all English people, so I've got to be careful. You're honor. So let's do the Greek. <laughs> the Greek for honor is timao, T-I-M-A-O. I put it on your screen for you to go and show off tomorrow. And it means to value something or to value somebody. To value somebody. It also means to highly esteem that individual. Highly esteem the person. To refer to the person as precious or that thing as precious. That's honor. It means you put that person or that article, whatever, in a protected place. When you honor something, when you honor somebody, when you honor a place, you don't treat it anyhow. When you honor a person, you recognize them for who they are without stumbling over who they are not. Don't forget that. On the flip side, when we talk about dishonor, when you put this before the honor, it means you treat the thing as common. And it's very easy, after a while, when familiarity sets in, to treat what you used to respect and honor as common. It's very easy. So this thing called honor is a constant work that you have to work on. You have to be conscious about it. It means to disrespect. Disrespect, I don't understand. I'm sure somebody will explain it to me later. To consider something as, oh, it's not important. And the sad reality that I've realized is that we, we tend to honor things and stuff that have no ability to change our lives. You can't touch my hair. These are my eyelashes. Who took them? Hey, my car. I've just brought it from the car wash. Don't go there. You can't eat my, in my car. And we honor such places. More than the honor that we give to God and his house. Hear me. What and who you honor grants you access. And what and who you dishonor moves away from you. That is why everywhere that Jesus went and he was dishonored, he left and you read your gospels, he never returned. Never. So let me give you three keys about honor, then I'll begin to finish. Are you learning so far? Number one, honor is never demanded. It is freely given. Nobody should demand honor. Honor me, honor me. No. You freely give that honor. And you realize that in the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses, the man of God, it's all about honor. The first four talk about honoring God, the Father. I'm the Lord your God, you ha shall have no other gods before me, no graven image. Take, you shall not take the name of the Lord, the God in vain. Hold, uh, honor my, the Sabbath and keep it holy. Is that. Then the next six where you live on earth is honoring one another. But I realize that most of us don't have a problem honoring God. Even though some do. We don't even have a problem honoring the servants of God, pastors, whatever. But sometimes the real test is honoring the car park attendant. Or the usher at the door. That becomes the challenge. Or oh, the boss who is a pain. That becomes a pain. Listen, I've realized it and I've learned it. If you cannot be, if you can be nice to me, 
which I know you do. I, I'm not sure whether it's true or false. Hmm. I don't know. I'm human. <laughs> sometimes I'm human. But if you, because I've realized sometimes, Pastor Kwame, that people can be mean and rude to ushers. And they turn around, they see me. Oh, hello, Pastor. Then they go down on their knees and I'm wondering, if you can be nice to me, but you can be mean to an usher, you are mean. You are mean. So as simple as that, you are, you are hypocrite. Hippo. <laughs> and your brother is a hippo. Number two. <laughs> Honor recognizes the value of a person. You recognize that your brother, your sister who sits beside you, the one you are in the same team with or whatever, they are valuable. So you honor people for who they are. It could be your parent. It could be a boss, your pastor, a leader, a law enforcement. Of everybody, if I give you 1 Peter 2 and 17, let's look at what the great fisherman says. 1 Peter chapter 2, he says, honor all people. Not some people. Honor all people. Thank you for the one amen. He says, honor all people. So don't come to church and look around and see who is wearing what before you honor him or her. You don't look at who has an old shoe or been wearing the same hairstyle for seven years. No, honor all people because you never know. People are packaged in packages that you may never understand. And it says, love the brotherhood, including the sisterhood. Fear God and honor the king. Which king? Which king? Which king? Peter was talking about Nero. The wicked emperor who was killing Christians. He would put them in his palace and pour tar on them and set them on fire so they can light up his compound. The one who started all this gladiator thing. Nero, wicked, burned down Rome and accused the Christians. And Paul, Peter is saying, honor him. This Christianity thing is nice. He didn't say honor a perfect person. You honor people for who they are and what they represent. Am I talking? If we learn this, we'll have a very, very quiet church. Pastors will feel like running away every day. Number three. Honor is expressed through our words and our deeds. If you honor somebody, your words to the person are important and then your actions towards the person too are important. Honor. And I realize that even though honor comes through words and action, it must first originate from your heart. Never forget that. It's important because if I honor you, it must be a heart issue because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you hear somebody continually diss somebody and they meet the person and say, oh, hi, you know that there's something happening in the heart. In fact, give me Matthew, Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Jesus was quoting Isaiah, the prophet. In Matthew 15 and 7, he said, hypocrites. So if I use the word hypocrite, I didn't use it. I was describing what it has said. He said, well, did Isaiah prophesy? Like Jesus was quoting Isaiah. And Isaiah said, he said, Isaiah prophesied about it. What did Isaiah say? He said, these people draw near to me with their mouth. And they honor me with their lips. But their heart is far away from me. Which means your heart and your worship can be absolutely vain. If it is just words from your lips, but not from your heart. He said, this is what you do. You are giving me all the platitudes. You are saying everything to the sisters around. To the brothers around. But you know that this one is just your mouth because you have an agenda. Listen, when you have honor in your heart, it shows in your words. It shows in your deeds. And please listen to me, everybody. It is never the plan of God for anybody, no matter who you are, to talk down on people. No matter your position, no matter your power, no matter your prestige, no, no, mat, no, no, mat, no matter your privileges, no matter your gift, God doesn't, there's nothing called the gift of rude. 
And sometimes it's amazing how Holy Spirit people in church can be so rude that if rudeness was measured in square meters, you should be living in, on the Sahara. Rude, play rude. And then the next time they are worshiping and you wonder, these people honor me with their lips. Rude. Especially tongue talkers. Look at, look at the one we follow, Pastor Ben. Jesus. I mean, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the sinless holy one. Check the gospel. He never talked down on it. Not even prostitutes. He honored people for who they were. Because the fact that somebody is, is caught up in some challenge doesn't demean them as a human being. Our attitude is so amazing. How we tie people to their present challenges and then we dishonor them. We talk. Tweet this if you like. Honor is not only how I speak to you. It is also how I speak about you. So you can't speak to me like nice, oh, Papa, and, and then the next time you are speaking terrible about the person. You are a hypocrite. So tweet it for yourself. You can put your name there. It's yours. I'll give it to you free. Honor is not only how I speak to you, but it is how I speak about you. In your absence, don't think about anybody. Are you learning? He wants us to become like him. To conform to his image. So that all your long talk about I'm not able to witness to people will be short. Because the reason why you can't witness to people, bring people to church, is because there's so much to be desired about your life out there. But if, if somebody can say, oh, he goes to your church, really? Then there's a problem with you. So who do we honor? Let me finish. Let me give you some space. Who do we honor? In one word. In one word. Everybody. Somebody say everybody. Oh, you, uh, listen. Say it like everybody, 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 whichever. Who do we honor? Everybody. Oh, one more time. Everybody. We honor everybody. Learn to honor people. But for the sake of this teaching, I want to put some few specifics from the Bible and then discuss them in eight minutes and I'll step out of your way. Because there are some specific instructions to some, about some specific individual. So number one, you honor God. If you learn to honor God in your life, I tell you, you will never go and even pray for God to give you favor. Honor. This is the first, this is the principal one. Because if you don't honor God, you will not be honored in life. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30, God himself is speaking. First Samuel 2 and 30. He says that, therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father will be for me, blah, 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 but far from me. He says that for those who honor me, I will honor. This is God. He says, if you honor me, I will honor you. And if you despise me, you'll be lightly esteemed. So you ask me, oh, I know you are going to, so how do I honor God? Three ways. Number one, you honor him with your service. With your service. Listen, never feel comfortable in any church, whether this one or wherever, anywhere. Never feel comfortable seated in a church and not use the gifts that God gave to you to serve him. Oh, I know people in this house, phenomenal players of instruments, phenomenal things, they, they, and they got offended somewhere. And they've been hiding in this house. And their prayer topics are about seven miles long. And sometimes they bring it to me and I say, the Lord is merciful. That's what I say. When I say the Lord is merciful, it's me, I won't mind you. <laughs> now I'm growing, so I'm giving you up my secrets. There are some things I say, the Lord is merciful. I, they, don't waste my time. Because your breakthrough is connected to your service. Never forget that. He gave you that gift for a reason and for a purpose. John chapter 12, listen to what Jesus said in verse 26. In John 12 and 26. Jesus said, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. 
And where I am, there my servant to be. And if anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Today we are getting into Bible. Jesus said, if you serve me, my father will honor you. So you can imagine God honoring you. Honoring you with marrying above your weight. Marry you with a job that you didn't train for. Marry you with that thing that you have been going about with prophets taking your money, traveling to places, and prophets, prophets are insulting you always. The answer is just before you honor God where you are. We are too sophisticated. Listen, you cannot run away anywhere to go and get a blessing. Your blessing is right where you are. But it's the principle that you are not obeying. That is what is costing you. So I don't care how anybody is anointed. You can go and spend 10 days in, in some place and go and rent anything and be there. It is up to you. The thing is here. I mean, I'll sit down and watch you. And when you come to me, the Lord is merciful. Number two, you honor him with your giving. I knew it would be only one amen. Who cares? I prepared myself. I said all uh, amens all night. Your giving is an honor to God. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. So when we call for giving, your offering, your tithe, and that is not because somebody wants to take from your pocket. He says, honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruit of all your increase. That is your tithe. When you do that, your banks, in those days, they didn't have bank accounts. So you can easily say your bank accounts will be filled with plenty. And your vats will overflow with new wine. Is, this, is it not good, good investment? Honor him with your giving, your substance, your possession. Say, Lord, you gave it to me and I'm giving it to you. We are, we are losing this. So long as I stand in shoe leather and I have strength and energy and grace, I will stick to this book. Malachi chapter 1. Oh, these are small prints. A son honors the father, a servant his master. And God the father is saying, if I am the father, where is my honor? And if I'm a master, do you revere me? You, the priest, who despise me. Yes, the priest first. Then they are so loud. In what way have you despised your dead? In what way? And he said, you come to my house and you offer defiled food on my altar. I, I have stayed, I want to stay away from this, at least for now. How we offer defiled food on altar. <laughs> and, and then they will question him again. In what have we defiled you? Because you are saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. And he said, when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? When you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? He's talking about the, the goats and the rams that you bring to the altar. He said, you take, you, he said, you are bringing maimed animals to me. Things that nobody, he said, you go and offer it to the governor. And see, look at the gifts that we give to people. We go to funerals and we pay monies for people we don't know to make a style show. And he said, you, you, the things you bring to church, go and offer it to people and see whether they'll be happy. Where is the honor? So we honor him with our service. We honor him with our giving. Then we honor him with our attitude towards his house. Because sometimes our attitude towards the house of God can be so dishonoring. Our attendance. Our timekeeping. Our attitude towards the preaching of God's word. On Monday, I was teaching a class, mentoring class, and I was telling them, when I stand here and I'm preaching, I watch everybody. Those who take notes and those who have amazing retentive memory. Who you are 17 times before I talk three times. It's your attitude towards God's word. And I watch you. I watch everybody. And people, they see, see, they are bored. They didn't come to church. They came to wait for somebody. Your attitude towards the house of God. That is why I have come here. You know it. I've come here, me and mom, several times. Come and cleaned up on Mondays. 
not because I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I just love God. I just love him. That's all. I've not been very well. I've not been very well. But on Thursday, I showed up here in the evening, all by myself. Said, Just pray, sir. And I said, let me go around. Let me see what I can do to make God tired. So when you see God blessing some people, before you bring out your jealous green eyes, you don't understand. I went down there. I picked up meals. I sorted them out. I did that. I did that. I put everything. Went to the general office. Took out trash. Did that. Tried. It's, it's, I just love God. It's not about me. I just love him. That is why you have tried me and I'm still not dead. You don't know secrets. So, number one, God. Let me, why are you sighing so hard? <laughs> number two, I wrote here, sigh, sigh, sigh. <laughs> number two, you honor servants of God. You honor the servant. Let's, listen, let this old-fashioned honor, because I know on Facebook today, the way people are bashing pastors, People are bashing people who don't represent us. We are paying a price for foolish people. <coughs> and I understand. Sometimes you wonder, what again can I do for my people to realize that I'm not like them? For years, you will live your life in the straight and the narrow. And still, they still suspect you. A pastor to me said, Papa, it's like, I, I, I go to church and I'm afraid because it looks like they are waiting for something to happen. Ah, we said it. And I said, brother, live your life before they kill you. Honor them. First Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13. He says, we urge you, brethren, sisters, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. They warn you like I'm doing. They are teaching you. And he said, esteem them highly, honor them highly in love because of the work they do and be at peace amongst yourselves. You see that? Esteem. Respect them highly. This is such a, a, a pastor, prophet, preacher, bashing generation. We don't fear anything. I pray to God Almighty that we will never be numbered amongst any congregation on earth that kills their prophets. <laughs> you, you, you don't understand. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23. Look at this. Jesus said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. When Jesus mentions your name twice, you are in trouble. How many of you remember growing up and your parents call you twice, especially by your middle name? <laughs> you know you are in trouble. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. You know, Jesus was talking about 2021. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers a chick under the wings, but you are not willing. Now look at it. He said, because of that, your house is left to you desolate. I've not finished. Yeah, hold it there. He said, listen, when you kill the people who are sent to you, when you stone them with your words and your attitudes and your lies, what happens is that your house is left desolate, which means it's dry. No, could it be that whatever you are going through is not because of any devil, any witch, but you are partakers of people who have cast stones at the ones who were sent to you. And the only way that can be lifted is the next verse. Give it to me. He said, for I said, you shall see me until you say, blessed is he who comes in there. Not until you receive us with joy. Now, blessed is the one who is, God has sent to me. Your house will be desolate. God has a way of sending things we need in packages we may not like. When you, when you, when you call, when you order for pizza, no pizza delivery guy comes with the, just the pizza in their hand. It comes in the box. But he didn't order the box. Unless you are a particular culture who keep things. <laughs> like milk things and milo cans and all those things and decorate their, their cupboards. Empty things. After you finish the pizza, you throw away. But you will never get the pizza without the box. 
So Paul had already talked about that we have this treasure in pizza boxes. So you honor God, you honor your pastors, you honor your parents. Honor your parents. Both your biological and your spiritual parents learn to honor them. Stop airing their mistakes and their parenting inadequacies. I wish I could talk to the young ones. Anytime we give you a microphone to talk, you have to bash your parents. And my parents this, and my African parents that, and my and that. One day, your children too are coming. Then you find out that parents knew everything, and you knew nothing. Give me a holy break. You know what they have gone through to raise you? Those Nike shoes on your feet, you think they just, manufact- they just came by abracadabra? They are never there. And if they were there too, they don't buy me things. Terrorist. You should thank God you are not my child. But we should have to learn. He said in Ephesians 6, he said, honor your parents in the Lord for this is right. For this is right. Then he goes on to say, honor your father and your mother for this is the first commandment with a promise that it may be well with you, number one, and that you may live long. Is it possible that people are dying so young because of this? Number four, I'm, I'm about to finish. Have you, have you had enough? Okay. Number four, you must learn to honor the elderly. This one is Bible. I'm teaching you Bible. Learn to honor. Oh, old man, old lady. You are old. You are getting old. That's why you two will never go old, grow old. One time, one of our gentlemen here came. He said, Papa, it's like you are growing old. And I said, when you get to my age, and you are half as good looking as I am, I'll give you a prize. <laughs> and I said, you, you are only 30. If I start with you and I say you are my son, nobody will believe you. They'll say you are my backbone. You know my backbone. <laughs> and I said, with all the pressures I go through, I look like this. And you, you, I said, if you don't have anything to talk to me about, just go away. You think the things that I go through on a given day, and I'm still looking so cool. Ma, you, you have no idea. <laughs> you, have no, you should see my classmates. I admit my classmates, they, some have no teeth. Some have only one eye. So he's like, like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Last month, I was out, out at a funeral of one of my closest childhood friends from, from, from secondary school, you know. I was at his funeral. And um, I sat there and, and they, 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 they set up an area for us to live where, like, old students, old classmates. I could not re- recognize one. <laughs> so my guy would say, Reverend, this is Tonad. I said, huh? <laughs> yeah, Tonad, yeah. This is senior. I said, oh. See this? Oh. <laughs> then I said, I'm going to use the washroom. Then I went and stood in front of the mirror. I said, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Frankie, baby, I like that one. Huh? Leviticus 19.32. <laughs> Leviticus 19.32. It says, you shall rise up before the gray-headed. And honor the presence of an old man, woman too, and fear your God. I am the Lord. So sometimes people don't understand when pastor walks into a room, an elderly, and people stand up. It's not our culture. I'm talking Bible. Forget about this American disrespect. This is Bible. He said when somebody, I know today because of hair dye and things, you may not, but at least gauge them by their age. I read this and I said, should I talk about this or not because of hair dye? <laughs> so old man is the most important thing. He said, when they walk into your presence, stand. You see me here, when I sit here, and our elderly women and this after church, I never sit down and talk to them. I never, never. You watch, you won't catch me. When I walk up to them and they stand, I say, please sit. Even later ones, I tell them, sit. It's honor. You walk all over people. He said, do that. Am I talking? Are we together? First Timothy chapter 5. 
He said, don't rebuke an older man. Don't rebuke an older man. But exhort him as a father or a mother. And then deal with the younger ones as your brothers and sisters. Verse 2. Older women, treat them as your mothers. And treat the younger women as sisters with all purity. Paul is doing body work. It's important. So just respect people. Amen. Number five, honor widows. <coughs> Give me my first Timothy, where we just ran away from. My first Timothy chapter five. Give me the third verse. Give me the third verse. He said, honor widows. Who are really widows? Honor widows who are really widows. That's why mommy and I, we spend a lot of our time visiting them, blessing them. I don't have to come and tell you. Go ahead. If we have verse number, no, never mind. But honor widows who are really widows. And he said, you should take care of them. He says, if a widow has children or grandchildren, then you must take care of them. It's not the church duty until you have done it. Because he says that if anyone doesn't look after them, then they have denied the faith. They are words and infidels. But when they are real widows and they have not, then he said they have spent their time serving God and things. Their reward is that the church must look after them. And that is honor. They will tell you. We show up at our, their doors. Yes, pastor. Oh, wait, pastor. Yes, pastor. Have to, yes, be Christians. And finally, the final one. Put on your seatbelt. You, you like this? All people. All people. We should be Christians in our example and honor all people, which means you respect people. You respect the agenda. Men respect women. Women respect men. Respect people's ethnicity. That's why if you have some time, you have to sit, uh, sit around for second service. Because you just do, it's a free fall. You have to learn. Just look down on people. Listen, do, do you have a choice where you were born? So why, why, why is this? Did you get to choose the color of your skin? The things that respect people's estate in life. It's not people who are rich that we clap for. Do you know how they made their money? Respect, you honor people by keeping their confidences. Gossip and slander, they are so dishonoring. So this month, as we go forward, honor up, honor sideways, honor downwards, and it will be well with you. I'm done. You want to pray? Listen, this is an instruction from your father. If you have a friend who is dishonoring, cut them off. I said cut them off. If you have a Facebook friend and their business, every time they post something, if they are angry with somebody and dissing people, cut them off. This is my instruction to you because you know what? I don't want your house to be desolate. Other than that, if you have a challenge and you come to me, the Lord is merciful. Because sometimes, listen, don't underrate some of us. I know more than you think I know. So when I sit back and I watch you, my watching is saying something to me. Like he said to Cain, when Cain did wrong and his offerings were not accepted, the literal Hebrew, God said, why are you angry? Why is your face like this? He said, if you did it right, would you have mercy? The literal Hebrew says that I'm giving you a chance. Go back and do it right and bring it down and accept it. Other than that, sin is lying at your door. It's looking for you to take control over you. So there are chances. Some of you, so you have to drop some people. The fact that we haven't said the whole truth about situations doesn't mean that we are guilty. But our job is said that we even protect liars. So there are issues that so you see, say, ah, why is it like? Why do you want to know? Here, we are, we are custodians of secrets. So when I tell somebody to sit down, 
and they come and lie to you, I know more than they are telling you. And you don't want me to tell what I know. Talk to God. This is the burden of being a pastor. When you carry things and you can talk and you don't want to talk. Talk to him. Don't you find that as a heavy burden? When you can talk. And the one talk will settle everything. And yet you can't talk. Because our mandate also means we have to protect interesting fools. Talk to him. Talk to him. Father, teach us more. Make us an honoring people. Where we honor you, we honor one another. We honor all men and women. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Somebody bless him. For more information, please visit our website at allnationsusa.com or simply call the church office at 770-923-8383. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Like us on Facebook. And follow us on Twitter. Stay blessed.